Last night, India Today was the only news channel to report that trouble was brewing in the BJP-PDP alliance and a separation was likely. That is exactly what happened this morning when BJP President Amit Shah met with BJP leaders mostly from Jammu. A decision was taken to end the alliance with Mehbooba Mufti's PDP. Now, it's very clear that the BJP has accepted that the effort that they made with Mehbooba Mufti did not yield the desired results. The big question, of course, is what happens from here on. We will do a deep dive, a detailed deep dive over the next one hour on what can happen next in Kashmir. Before that, let me get you the day's biggest story. We find our contingency in this government to be totally untenable. It's, it's time that matters are taken over by the governor. Situation is uh, restored to normalcy. Then we can take the political process forward. After three years of uneasy alliance, BJP pulling the plug on PDP and Mehbooba Mufti. BJP blamed Mehbooba for not being able to secure the freedom of common Kashmiris and said that the failure of Ramzan ceasefire and the brutal killing of rising Kashmir editor Shujat Bukhari was the last straw. I also referred to the recent killing of uh, Shujat Bukhari in broad daylight in Srinagar city and four days, five days after that we are nowhere uh, near uh, catching the uh, culprits. So it is, it is uh, a big serious question about protecting the uh, fundamental rights of the people. The decision looked imminent when BJP President summoned top Jammu and Kashmir BJP leaders for a meeting on Tuesday. After hours of deliberations, the writing was on the wall. Jammu Kashmir ke halat ko dekhte huye, Governor rule wahan par juri tha, aisa samjha gaya. Ab kiyo? Abhi kiyo? Timing pe sawal uth raha hai ki abhi kiyo ye decision liya gaya? Ramzan ke mahine ke baad jo dolmat suni hai, usi ko dekhte huye ye aisa kiya gaya. Sabse bade apprehension tha 370 ko leke. Mehbooba resigned immediately after the BJP announced it was parting ways and reached out to her core voter base in the valley. ये हमारे दुश्मनों की टेरिटरी नहीं है हमारे जम्मू कश्मीर के लोगों की टेरिटरी है इसलिए यहां मस्कुलर पॉलिसी कामयाब नहीं हो सकती है जम्मू कश्मीर में जो पीडीपी का एजेंडा है हीलिंग टच पॉलिसी का जो पीडीपी का एजेंडा है कि जम्मू कश्मीर में पाकिस्तान से भी बात होनी चाहिए यहां के लोगों से भी बात होनी चाहिए हमने कहा 370 के साथ छेड़छाड़ नहीं होनी चाहिए हमने 4 साल तक कोई छेड़छाड़ नहीं होने दी वो हमारे एजेंडे का पार्ट है Meanwhile, Omar Abdullah, who met Governor N. N. Vora, called for fresh elections. The Congress also ruled out an alliance with the PDP. If we have a mandate in 2014, then we don't have a government in 2018. We, are, we want that at the, earliest, at the earliest available opportunity, that the people of Jammu and Kashmir are given a chance to decide their future again. नहीं हम किसके साथ हमारे पास तो बहुमत है ही नहीं तो पीडीपी को अपने साथ लेने का वो तो खुद डूबे हैं उनके साथ जो भी जाएगा तो वो भी डूब जाएगा With NC and the Congress already having declared it won't back the PDP to form government the state now seems to be headed towards governor's rule The PDP BJP both were always strange bedfellows uh, given their uh, difference in the ideologies that they followed Three years down the line, the alliance has run its course. With the governor's rule now looking inevitable, the question really is, will this improve the situation on the ground in Kashmir Valley or will this make the things all the more worse? With Shudiranjan Sen, Polomi Saha, Pooja Shali, this is Shujaul Haq for India Today. With the government gone, is the situation in Kashmir now going to get better or is it going to get a whole lot worse? Joining us on the newsroom showdown tonight, I want to begin by introducing Ravinder Raina. He's the newly minted president of the Jammu and Kashmir State BJP. With us also on this broadcast, Nasir Aslamwani. He's the senior leader of the National Conference, Omar Abdullah's party. Firdaus Tak, 
uh, is joining us. We've got Sohail Bukhari with us. He's worked very closely with Mehbooba Mufti, understands what's going on within the PDP for a national perspective. Joining us, national spokesperson of the BJP, Sambit Patra, with me for a military mind, Colonel Thapar. Uh, I want to start by asking Ravinder Raina first. The government is gone. There are people who are apprehensive that things could get worse. What makes you believe that with Mehbooba Mufti no longer as Chief Minister, with the BJP-PDP alliance over, is the situation in Kashmir going to get worse or better? Ravinder Raina. Uh, Rahul ji, you are absolutely right and uh, the concern that you have uh, shown uh, in the very early remarks, you are absolutely right. This is the point uh, we came out of this coalition government because of the deteriorating law and order situation in Kashmir Valley. And it is our utmost responsibility to restore peace, normalcy and brotherhood in Kashmir. To develop the sense of security among the people in Jammu and Kashmir that uh, we have lost drastically in the last 3-4 months. Though we tried our level best repeatedly, even uh, the Union Home Minister repeatedly visited Kashmir Valley, but things won't change and uh, we have seen how every no, no, journalist... You are accepting your failures, you are accepting that radicalization is going up, that things are a mess, that violence levels are up. But Sambit Patra, my question is this, what gives us the faintest <coughs> hope that the situation in the Kashmir Valley is going to get better? because you've clearly tossed the political option out of the window. You're back to an all-out military approach. You've tried a military approach in the past through operations like Operation All Out. They didn't yield the desired results. You went to Operation All In. That didn't work. Now you've tossed politics out of the window. Why do I believe things will get better? Samit Patra. See, Rahul, you have to understand one thing. As far as Jammu and Kashmir is concerned, looking at the complexity of the problem, particularly of Kashmir Valley, the problem of infiltration by Pakistan, the problem of terrorism and deteriorating law and order situation, you would of course unequivocally agree to the fact that we need a focused mindset, a single line agenda, that anyhow we have to have a zero tolerance of terrorism. And that's the reason as to why any kind of ideological friction would not move well with this all kind of, of this fight was known to you Sambit to Patra today. three years ago when you got into alliance I'm, I'm, I'm going with Mehbooba Mufti now don't I'm going to talk that about that uh, yeah, that. no no one second Sambit Ra Patra I don't Rahul, want to go Rahul, into the I'm past your to, alliance was a mess we've had problems with it from the very start I am not talking about your that, unholy Rahul, alliance with the BJP PDP listen to my question and try and respond to that my question is this Sambit Patra why should anyone watching this broadcast tonight believe that what we'll see from now will be better than what we've seen in the past three years. Respond just to this question, Sambit Patra. No, with a different ideology working together, I mean two different ideologies because of inflicted mandate, we still could eliminate 619 terrorists in the last three years and that was a historical high in this country's history you would see nowhere before the political dispensations which have been at the helm of affair in Jammu and Kashmir have eliminated these number of terrorists Sambit Patra, you are providing a report card for your government I am not seeking a report card from your government your man for Kashmir Ram Madhav admitted your government was so a I'm disaster you. it didn't succeed I am asking you this no, I Why not will it what will oh, once again? It was a you are saying that radicalization is going up, violence is going up, terrorism is going up, fundamental rights of the citizens are under danger in the Kashmir Valley. These are not my words; these are Ram Madhav's words. All of them sound like a negative report card. None of them sound positive. Leave your negative report card in the past. I think that is well established. I'm asking you this question, and I'll ask you again, Sambit Patra. Why do I believe things will get better, not worse? So since you have interrupted me twice, I would simply smile and say, wait and watch. There would be time in the future and you will get your question. As I had said, 619 terrorists in the past, number of them to be eliminated in the days to come. And of course, when the governor rule comes in, comes in the complete freedom of the army and the military establishment. And that's the reason as to why the kind of situation that needs to be tackled, the lawlessness in Jammu and Kashmir, the terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir would be tackled with an iron fist and that's the reason as to why my answer is very simple wait and watch things are going to improve no that is assuming that an iron fist response is what Kashmir requires because just last month you were telling us that what we require Ravinder Raina is the velvet touch we need to extend the hand of friendship which is why we're doing the Ramzan ceasefire now you're telling us that the iron fist is the answer 
there are very, very, very few examples globally where the iron fist approach has worked. Conventional wisdom suggests that the route to any kind of forward movement in Kashmir is through some form of dialogue. The iron fist approach rarely works, Ravinda Raina. Uh, Rahulji, we tried our level best and uh, even during the month of Ramazan, though it was not a unilateral ceasefire, it was in peace initiative. And uh, with this, we even uh, you might have read the uh, instruction by the uh, Ministry of Home Affairs that if the security forces find any apprehensions that terrorists may strike, our Jawans will not remain the mute spectator. Our intention was very clear. We want peace, normalcy and rule of law in Jammu and Kashmir. That's why we gave an opportunity to all the sections of society and it was in peace initiative. But Pakistan responded negatively. Terrorists uh, on 22 occasions thrown grenade on uh, civilian areas, number of terrorist attacks on police stations and army installations and even to the Muslims of Ravinda Raina, like Sambit Patra, you are explaining your failures. We've understood that no, your no, Kashmir no, policy no, no, has failed. Point. That is not the point here. The Around point the, is, is thing, are things going to get better or worse? You're putting the definitely. initiative now entirely on the military. You're saying we'll go ahead with the iron fist approach. Uh, no. One second. Raulji, Colonel Tapar, I want to come to thing, you. Ravinda yeah. Raina, one second. You've one spoken. Thing, Sambit Patra. Like okay, 20 well, seconds. Go uh, Rahulji, one thing I would like to mention over here categorically that you will find a drastic change in the situation, a normalcy, peace will prevail in Kashmir Valley because there will be a single line administration and you will find zero tolerance against okay. terrorism. So there are, two, speak, there are two things. Okay, okay. There are two things we've heard both from the state BJP and from the national BJP. Colonel Tapar, no ideological friction, single purpose agenda, iron fist, kill the terrorists, we'll go all out. Will this approach work? No, you see, whichever approach works will be adopted. But what is going to happen is that instead of a confused kind of a conflicting uh, decision making, now the decision making will be clear without any politics involved in it. Politics which are towards the appeasement of the constituency, they will not be there and we will be able to get a clear cut order and a clear cut instruction what to do. Presently what is happening is we are blowing hot, we are blowing cold. Sometimes we want, uh, we were going all out, suddenly you wanted a Ramzan uh, ceasefire, which retarded everything. Okay. All the, all That's the a good point decisions. from a military perspective that now, Naseem, Naseer Aslam Bani, there is clarity of purpose. You're not blowing hot one moment, blowing cold the other moment. There's no politics, no confusion. There's a clear line of decision making, go kill the terrorists. The military mind on our show says, at least there is clarity and for what it's worth, that clarity will be better than the friction of being dragged into opposite directions. Mr. Wani. Uh, Rahul, as you rightly pointed out, this uh, alliance between PDP and BJP was not acceptable from the very uh, uh, start. And we have time and again been saying that this uh, uh, alliance between North Pole and South Pole is, uh, is not working on ground and the situation on ground has deteriorated to the lowest level that we have ever seen uh, since the militancy of the United States. BJP state. spokesperson, you are going into on, a report card accounts, of the PDP-BJP uh, alliance. That account. alliance was a disaster. It never worked from the first day. That's been my consistent view. I'm asking no, you no, it's not to that, look into the future a, it, and tell me now, Mr. Wani, in the view of the national National conference. Will the situation in Kashmir now get better or worse? The military mind in our broadcasting, at least there is clarity of purpose. The army will not be pulled in two opposite directions. Respond to what you see happen in the future. Mr. Wani. See. See, as a responsible uh, opposition, we have always maintained that this government should uh, work its full term. But unfortunately, uh, uh, we have seen that it didn't work on ground at all. And now with this uh, decision and acceptance of failure by BJP, uh, we are convinced that this alliance was not uh, tenable any longer. So uh, we were expecting it uh, for quite some time now. 
this surprise move by BJP has proven that the, uh, this government was to totally fa failing in its uh, responsibilities of maintaining uh, law and order primarily. I ask you as a third time, also, you're not responding to my question. I don't know why we're so not being, I'm not being able to get through to you. My question is this, the alliance is gone. The alliance was See, not working, it never did. Will the situation, just, so you, you're, just, a, you're just, a long standing watcher me, of Kashmir. Have, Do you believe no. with a military approach, will things get better or will they get worse? Respond to my question. What's your instinct? One thing, uh, one, one thing, Rahul, listen to me. One thing I will t uh, be able to tell you that the anger level will definitely go down. People were not accepting this government at all. So I think half of the anger will go because this PDP and BJP government has gone. But it will still be hypothetical on my part to say that uh, to comment what what will be the future and how things will shape up uh, in the state. You are saying that the anger levels will go down. Uh, I am not a hundred percent certain of that because and, earlier and people in Kashmir saw Mehbooba Mufti as that chief minister for whatever it was worth. She was a Kashmiri. Uh, she belonged to that area and had some traction in areas around the Kashmir Valley. Now Sohail Bukhari, there is governor's rule. This is Delhi's man ruling uh, Kashmir and. He's got permission for an all-out military offensive. Now, we've heard from Sambit Patra, we've heard from Ravinder Rana, we've heard from Colonel Thapar. They think that because there is clarity of purpose, because Mehbooba Mufti is not pulling the army down, not giving conflicting instructions, therefore things will get better. So, Hail Bukhari, do you agree? Well, you know, when, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, professing or uh, getting into the future realm and uh, um, saying, sitting right now as to how things are going to turn tomorrow, I think Kashmir has till date uh, been a graveyard of reputation and I'm not going to do that. But for sure, in the, in the backdrop of your question, what I can say is that there remains a fact that despite there being a coalition government of BJP and PDP, let's not assume that army was under straight uh, control of the chief minister of Jammu and Kashmir. They did what they had to do and that uh, happened through the dictations and the orders that were coming from the Ministry of Defense and the central government. So to say that <coughs> now that Mehba Mufti is out of the chair and there is single-minded approach going to be taken from here on, uh, that would bring some kind of a change. I really don't, don't know how that's going to translate on ground. What I can say, uh, based on what we have seen publicly being put on record by some of the senior uh, security officials and senior army commanders in past is that Kashmir is an issue that cannot be unilaterally uh, tackled by means of military, by means of, uh, you know, uh, gun. There has to be a political intervention at various levels. Having said that, we also need to uh, understand that the man uh, of the moment, the person in chair, Mr. Vora, is a seasoned and an old Kashmir and he has had various innings in various uh, you know uh, positions including that of an interlocutor so we believe that you know the complexities of course are understood and you know we can only hope because we in Kashmir can just not uh, afford to be hopeless we can only uh, hope okay. that things will I, I want to bring in here. now Manish Tiwari of the Congress party a big question tonight will the situation in Kashmir now get better or worse with the Mehbooba BJP government gone? Manish Tiwari. Well, Rahul, first of all, the BJP PDP government was an unnatural government. It was an opportunistic alliance. It was an unprincipled alliance. It was an unholy alliance. And they have done a lot of damage to Jammu and Kashmir over the past three years that this government has been in existence. Having said that, the decision of the BJP to unilaterally pull the plug on the PDP and bring that government to a closure is going to have its own implica implications and its own repercussions in Jammu and Kashmir. There is a narrative which has been running in that state for a very long time now that mainstream political parties and Delhi cannot be trusted. And what the BJP has done today, and I'm rising above partisan political considerations, is actually strengthening that narrative, is actually adding fuel to that narrative. And therefore, you would find that this will have implications on the ground over the coming uh, weeks and months. So I now for the BJP to turn around and say that the PDP was... PDP was responsible or uh, squarely 
for the deteriorating law and order situation in Jammu and Kashmir is absolutely erroneous. Okay, so I want to come now if you are in to a question number two. As a coalition question number partner, two on the newsroom you, you, you tonight. Take the responsibility and the bricks in the uh, Can okay. the army now bring the law and order situation go ahead, in go ahead. Kashmir under control in the absence of political engagement? I want to put that question first to Sambit Patra because a couple of important points were made. Even with the PDP BJP government in power, the army pretty much did what it had to. All the military operations and offenses you had to launch, whether it was in Kashmir or on the uh, international boundary and the LOC, you were able to do. It's not as if Mehbooba stopped any of that. Now that the army is principally in charge, what makes you think the law and order situation will be better when? You know, the message is going out to the valley that Delhi and Delhi political parties can't be trusted. Samit Patra. Uh, Rahul, we had seen a couple of times, despite the fact that the army gets its command from the defense ministry, and in fact, the uh, chief minister in Jammu and Kashmir had nothing to do with the orders as far as the orders delivered to the army is concerned. But we had seen as to how FIRs were written against some of the uh, Jawans, majors, etc. of the army, and we had to see as to how the army even had to go to the courts, and then the central government had to intervene, saying that we don't want these cases to continue. So, of course, this deters, and that that deters the morality of the army that deters the uh, it deters the courage of the army to get continue with this kind of fight. So surely with this uh, unipointedness, with this focal attitude that the army would now be having under a single command, that would definitely change the situation on the ground. See, very sadly, I am to state that as far as opportunism of this alliance is concerned, well, yes, definitely it was an un unholy alliance. You can call it because we are the north and the south end. But this is the beauty of democracy. If it was an inflicted mandate, the 25 and 28 seats, was there any other solution in the valley? Either we should have gone for a president's rule for from the very beginning okay uh, dictating okay. to the world that so because i want to look into the in future the fact that this was a disastrous alliance was known to everyone from the first day so i don't want to uh, cry over why this alliance happened now you're calling it an unholy alliance you've been on this program in the past defending this alliance very strongly but that's what you need to do as a spokesperson no, change as per the story I call it as per the story of alliance. the day but i want to look out into the future ravinder raina you know, I grew up in the Kashmir Valley. My father served there many terms. We've spoken to army officers on the record, off the record. Even in the recent past, the army chief said there has to be space for political dialogue. Any sensible army man will tell you that there can be no military solution to Kashmir, that there has to be room for political dialogue, that you have to win hearts and minds. That is as important as a military offensive. What makes you confident that an all-out military approach will bring the law and order situation in Kashmir under control. Uh, Rahul ji, as far as the statement made by the, uh, our uh, army chief, uh, General Deepan Rawat, regarding the dialogue process in Kashmir is concerned, whenever we talk about the dialogue, there are so many stakeholders. We have Gujars, Bakarwals, Shias, nationalist Muslims in the Kashmir Valley. There are Pahadis in Rajori, Poonch, in Doda, Bhadrava, Kishtawad area. There is Kargil, there is uh, Leh Ladakh. And there is a large section of society, those migrated from Pakistan, occupied Jammu and Kashmir in 1947, around uh, 30 lakh population. There are West Pakistani refugees living in Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, definitely we will try to engage all these sections of societies and uh, to, to, to look into their grievances and we will definitely address the issues. As far as terrorism is concerned, there will be zero tolerance against terrorism and we will ensure that there will be there was the there policy before this ravinder raina of a hundred percent tolerance to terrorism or even 50 percent tolerance to terrorism your policy has been zero tolerance to terrorism from day one so it's not as if that policy is changing as uh, uh, the uh, uh, colonel thopper had said there was a coalition government earlier in jammu and kashmir and now there will be a single line administration that would be looked after by the Honorable Governor of Jammu and Kashmir and I do hope and will definitely uh, assure you uh, that there will be a clear-cut message, no confusion in the policy, no, clear second. policy. No, no, one second. Look, Colonel Thapar, look at those images on our screen yes, right now. That's what I want These to... are youngsters out on the streets. Yeah. They're not scared of their lives. Let's not live in denial. Yeah. Okay. Despite the fact that they're facing the CRPF, the army, who may open fire at them, some of them may get killed or maimed. They're out there. Uh, they're fighting us. 
now with the army as your only instrument there, are you confident that things, that law and order will come under control? Because so far with everything we've tried, we haven't been able to bring stone pelting to a halt, for example. Well, um, uh, allow me to say, uh, amplify a little bit about what the chief has said. The immediate, uh, the task of the armed forces is limited, the military is limited to restoring the writ of the state mm. and the respect for law. That is altogether absent today. So, by using the military to that extent, we want to restore respect for the law and the writ of the state. That's an important point. Let Manish you know, Tiwari respond. And respect for that, the law we and writ of the state. Once the stone pelters find out that the army and the CRPF won't just take hits, you attack them, they will attack you back. And that message goes out strong. That by itself will cre create a fear and the fear of law will return. That fear of law has gradually been abetting in Kashmir and that's a big problem and the army can fix that. Manish Tiwari, respond. Uh, Rahul, uh, with great respect, I would like to disagree. And the reason I would like to disagree is because if you look at the history of insurgencies around the world, you know, hard power is only uh, relevant or hard power is only germane to a particular point and after a certain inflection point if you do not apply soft power which is the process of political negotiations reaching out to various stakeholders uh, hard power actually starts producing diminishing returns and in Jammu and Kashmir the last time the situation had flared up after uh, the encounter of Buna, uh, Burhan Bani, it actually required the intervention by a joint parliamentary committee going to Jammu and Kashmir and trying to cool tempers. So therefore, this equation that if uh, you only apply hard power, you will be able to get the writ of the state to start running again, I am afraid is a complete non sequitur. If you look at Punjab between 1988 and 1992, when militancy was at its worst and when the army got deployed uh, in Punjab once again, you know, uh, post-1984, there was a concurrent and a simultaneous outreach uh, to various stakeholders, which was launched by the then Rajiv Gandhi government, by Prime Minister Chandrasekhar, okay. and followed up by Prime Minister Narsimha. So, what I'm going so to therefore, this reliance on hard power, I'm afraid, is going to be is 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 is, is, is not a street which is going to get you any returns. I, I think that is being given a bit of a slant. You know, it is never meant that only the hard power of the army will be ruthlessly used. We are a we are a thinking state. It's not only the Congress who thinks about all these things, everybody thinks. And I said the role of the army is limited to bringing about the immediate arrest of this slide, which is disrespect for the law, which is uh, okay. uh, totally, uh, you know, um, the, the, the writ of the state is missing altogether. So, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to extend, I'm gonna extend this debate into part two of the newsroom tonight because there are two very important questions I still wish to take up. Question number one, is the split between the BJP and the PDP another proof of the BJP's confused policy on Kashmir? Is the BJP guilty of being confused on Kashmir from day one, from believing that an alliance which Sambit Patra now calls an unholy alliance with the PDP will somehow magically bring peace? To, one second, alliance. to believing that a ceasefire will suddenly bring peace, to realizing that ceasefires don't bring peace, to now use the killing of Sujat Bukhari as a reason to cancel this alliance and to now walk their own way. Has the BJP been confused from day one on Kashmir? Question number two, given the non-stop violence, will it be possible to hold elections? Remember the last time there were elections, the voting percentage was two, two percent on some uh, booths. Otherwise, the voting percentage was 7. Will it be possible? Those are tough questions. We need to face and address these questions. Will we be able to hold elections again? I'll ask that question. And it doesn't sound like a good question to ask, but it's an important question to ask. So I will ask that question when we come back with part 2 of the newsroom tonight. Stay with us. We're back in a moment. Welcome back. The decision of the BJP to split with the PDP seems to have caught Mehbooba Mufti off guard. Uh, she told some PDP leaders that the only time they actually found out 
was when the BJP press conference was happening. Before that, they had some sense of there being some unease, but that Mehbooba Mufti would have to split from the BJP is something that she hadn't calculated. What is it that, ha that the BJP had in its mind? Why is it that this alliance ended in this rupture? Our political bureau gets you the inside story. June 14th. One day, two horrific deaths. Two murders that proved to be the death knell for the uneasy alliance in Jammu and Kashmir. But the writing had been on the wall for a while. Especially two years ago, after the encounter of Hezbollah Mujahideen terrorist Burhan Wani in July 2016. The major success for the security forces was decried by Mehbooba Mufti herself. इस वक्त जब आपके हालात सुधर रहे हैं तो मैं समझती हूं कि एक चांस हो सकता था मगर चूंकि पुलिस इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसी यह कहती है कि उनको यह मालूम था वहां कोई तीन मिलिटेंट है किसी के घर में और उनको यह नहीं था कि इसमें कौन-कौन है exactly a year later when the bjp led center demanded a larger debate on article 35a which grants special status to the state of jammu and kashmir mehbooba's response was this stern warning let me tell you let me share something with you कि 35 ए के साथ छेड़छाड़ ये जो साहब मेरे पास सामने बैठे हैं या मैं बैठी हूं जो वहां पर हमारी पार्टीज जो वहां नेशनल फ्लैग को लेके खड़े होते हैं सारे रिस्क के बावजूद हमारे वर्कर्स इनके भी हजारों के तादाद मारे गए हमारे भी मारे जाते हैं तो मुझे मैं ये बताने में मुझे कोई गुरेज नहीं है कि उस झंडे को कांधा देने वाला कोई नहीं होगा लेट मी मेक इट वेरी क्लियर November 2017, when the Mehbooba government decided to give amnesty to almost 3,000 stone pelters, the cracks were starkly visible again. Efforts to take the coalition's differing aims forward by even agreeing to these policies soon went down in vain. The tipping point was the Ramzan ceasefire. The holy month, meant to be a goodwill gesture to bring peace in the valley, was riddled with violence. Perhaps the answer lay in this cryptic response by the Home Minister, barely days after his valley visit. Kya aap alagawadiyon ke prati jo aniti hai ki aap unse baatchit nahi karenge, usi par kaam rahenge ki kahi na kahi national security pe compromise ho. Baatchit karne ke liye like-minded hona avashyak nahi hai, lekin right-minded hona avashyak hai. What's left are the ashes of an alliance of convenience and a state in a state of uncertainty. Bureau Report, India Today. When the BJP was in opposition and advocated a hardline approach to Kashmir, after the Jammu and Kashmir elections, they jumped into bed with the BDP. They thought they could bring peace. That didn't work, so they tried Operation All Out. That didn't work. More militants were being produced, so they jumped to the Ramzan ceasefire. That didn't work either. Sujat Bukhari and Aurangzeb were killed, so now they've gone back to the military approach. Sambit Patra, from day one, it would seem that the current dispensation in the BJP has been confused on Kashmir. You keep switching like a yo-yo from one end of the pendulum to the other without any consistency, without giving any of these initiatives adequate time to run themselves out there's this constant button on button off military civil military civil velvet glove iron fist you keep jumping you're totally confused samit patra 
No, as far as uh, we being confused is concerned, I absolutely and uh, I very respectfully disagree with you. I would say that the confusion lies elsewhere. The confusion lies in realizing the germane problem in Jammu and Kashmir. The problem which many people have been propagating is a political one. I would be brave enough to say is a religious one and that's the reason as to why the words like radicalization, words like Ramzan, ceasefire, quote unquote, these have been posted over here. And until and unless we take on these issues, we accept these issues bravely and straightforwardly we are not going to solve it. Remember over here we have seen Burhan Wani, we had seen videos of Musa, Zakir Musa calling for a caliphate. We had even seen some political leaders saying that pick up the stone in the name of Allah. So naturally these issues have to be addressed in a different way and a very bold way without, uh, uh, without in any way hurting the secular fabric of this country. Secondly and most importantly, look, as far as dealing with the separatists in Jammu and Kashmir, particularly the valley is concerned, we have seen as to how addressing the constituency was the most right thing that most of the political parties of the valley practiced and this this coming away from the inflicted mandate i would not call it an unholy alliance i would call it what mr jaitley had always called it an inflicted alliance coming out well of the you did call alliance. it an unholy Today alliance so those were your own words but some bit some bit patra has spoken manish tiwari manish tiwari the bjp can say this in its defense we didn't go in with a bang bang approach in kashmir we gave peace a chance Prime Minister Modi and Amit Shah went in for a Ramzan ceasefire despite the likes of Ravinder Raina disagreeing with them. Their men on the ground were disagreeing. They had the magnanimity to say, let's give peace a chance. The army held back, the militants didn't. So now they have adequate reason to say, we tried the peace option, that didn't work. Therefore, we have to go back to the full military option. Manish Tiwari. Well, I'm afraid, Rahul, it is not going to work because if you go back to the uh, classical coin doctrine or its latest manifestation, which was uh, written by General Petraeus uh, when he commanded both uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, the one thing which clearly came out of the coin doctrine was that till the time you do not win the hearts and minds of the people, hard power will never be able to succeed. So therefore, let me take my friend Sambit back uh, to uh, the year 2000-2001. There was an attack on the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly. It was followed by an attack on Indian Parliament. We mobilized a million men in Operation Parakaram. Manish Tiwari, and ultimately people will cite the example fired, of Israel. And we lost, uh, I'm, not, I'm not agreeing with this, but people. people will cite the example of the LTTE, the battle against the LTTE, and allow say me, hard power allow, can work. Me, Look at how Israel, uh, you know, you can't talk and find a solution. Allow, you tried that, it didn't work. No, uh, Israel and Sri Lanka examples that hard power can help fix the problem. Well, uh, again, Rahul, I would uh, re uh, respectfully disagree with you. Despite Israel using the hard power, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict continues to fester. The Hamas still controls the Gaza Strip. There is almost a third intifada which is playing itself out uh, in the West Bank. So therefore, to say that the Israeli use of hard power has succeeded, I think is completely fallacious. Okay, Sambit Patra, respond to this, that Lanka, Israel is the one what you're global example of the ultimate use of hard power. The prophet of doom, They've but got Sri Lanka may be in a different situation uh, five years from now. They've got disproportionate military dominance. See, They've sorry. used it. And yet it's not as if the problem with Rahul. Palestine has gone away, Sambit Patra. Rahul, I would not draw any parallels with any other country. Let me come back to our own country and we have to deal with the situation on the ground in our own way. Having said that, the people who are promoting that hearts have, the hearts have to be won, Dil Jeetna Hai, Kashmiriya Jeetna Hai, absolutely stand with them. Hearts have to be won. But whose heart? the hearts of the people who are the real stakeholders, the ones who bear allegiance to the constitution of the country, not the hearts of terrorists. Try as hard as you may, Rahul, any one of us, the panelists, can you win the heart of a terrorist? Of course not, because they have an ideology, thanks to radicalization, thanks to the indoctrination, they believe that a caliphate has to be created, that they believe an IS, IS flag is what is required. Can you win the heart of that terrorist? Of course not. Bullet is the language that the terrorist would understand. Books, computers and development oh, is the Bukhari, language that a person I want to bring you in on this, the that there are people who are holding the IS flag in Kashmir. There Rahul, are people Rahul, who hold... Him, one, one second. There are people Rahul, who hold allegiance. 
I, I, I hear you, Mr. Wani. I'm coming to you in a moment. Who hold allegiance to hardline extremist fundamentalist ideologies? There's no point in talking to them. You have to go after them, hammer and tong. Sohail Bukhari. Well, <coughs> the, you know, you've done that. Not that, not that uh, the security forces or the state apparatus has not gone after them. But the question remains that these. 100, 200 youngsters who have been uh, taking up the flags of ISIS or any other militant organization, whether local or international, are they the only problem? No. You have a mass population that is seeking a political dialogue of, uh, of an issue that has existed for seven decades. And you know, you are not ready to first accept it, you continue to be in the denial mode and then say that you know this is the problem, if ISI flag is the problem, we'll uh, ensure that this is dealt with Bani, and we are taken care of. Sambit Patra you, says you, you those holding the ISIS flag, you can't have dialogue with them, you have to take them down. Please hear me out for a, a minute Rahul, please. Uh, as much as I am pleased to see the shift of um, uh, mindset of uh, Mr. Samit Patra, who has now accepted that it was an unholy alliance between PDP and BJP. I'm also shocked at what uh, Mr. Ravinder Rana has said and how he is trying to uh, divide the people of the state on the basis of religion, ethnicity, regions and all. That is the mindset which is creating problems on ground. Unless and until we have an approach which is a political approach and we start a dialogue process with all shades of opinion in the state, we are not going to achieve anything. We have seen this hard approach for a long time now and it has only <coughs> added and multiplied the problem on ground. So I want to come uh, now as as I to the last part with, uh, of the question Bukhari, I, that I'm going to ask on the newsroom tonight. One second. I have only a few minutes left. So my last question to tonight is this gentleman. Given the non-stop violence, will it be possible to hold elections in Kashmir in the foreseeable future? And I want to put out some perspective for you. When there was a bipole in Srinagar, only 2%, hear me, 2% voter turnout was recorded. This during the repoll. The overall percentage in the entire constituency was at 7.13. When the repolling happened on 38 polling stations in Srinagar, the voting percentage was 2 of the 34,000 voters, 700 odd voters showed up to vote. On some voting percentage, uh, on some voting booths like Bargam, Charare Sharif, no votes were polled. In Khan Sahib, zero votes were polled. In Bargam, three votes were polled. Sambit Patra, this is a tough question. So think deeply before you respond. Given the level of violence now, will it be possible for your government? Good, good. Will it be possible for your government to hold elections? I want in to Kashmir? answer that. One second. One second. Sambit Patra, carefully please. Uh, 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 Rahul, just five seconds before I answer this question specifically, I just want to clarify that I don't consider BJP and PDP, the alliance that was till today as an unholy alliance. What I meant to say was it was an inflicted alliance and those who say it is an unholy alliance should see that as a... Okay, we we'll leave that on the aside. The the we we'll leave that on the aside. The yes, and now coming to the specific question. Now coming to the question that you have asked, whether in the future will we be able to hold free and fair election with people participating in it. Number one, I have complete faith in democracy in Jammu Kashmir. I have complete faith on the majority people of Jammu and Kashmir. It's only a handful who would like to disrupt the process. The others, they participate and that's the reason as to why we had seen almost 70 percentage voting in the valley and Jammu region as well. Secondly, with peace returning. With the governor's rule, I'm very sure that it would, it would create a cordial environment, an atmosphere where voting would be easy and there would be no threat hanging off the separatists but, or the Pakistani participants. You know, Sambit Patra, let me give you some context. People, which would deter it was them in, in any June way. 2016. Mr. Patra. Well, one second. It was in June 2016 that Mehbooba Mufti vacated the Anant Nag seat. Since then, the Union of India hasn't been able to hold a Lok Sabha by election for one reason or the other. This is the longest since 1996 that any by-election has been held off. The last time any form of polling happened, the voting percentage was true. All these are dire statistics, Manish Tiwari, but they require deep reflection. Is it going to be possible for this government to hold elections in Kashmir any time in the foreseeable future, Manish Tiwari? Well, uh, for holding elections, you require people to have confidence in the state. 
and you correctly pointed out that the BJP PDP government and the union government led by the BJP has not been able to hold one Lok Sabha by poll now for 24 long months. So therefore that tells its own story. Rahul, the reality is that alienation, radicalization and then extremism is a cycle which has been playing itself out repeatedly in Jammu and Kashmir. And what has happened in the past three years as a consequence of the BJP PDP alliance being in government is that the alienation of a very, very wide section of uh, the population has increased. Okay, now see Raslam Bani. No, of, of, you of, see of, of elections of happening anytime so soon. Time Let Mr. Wani come in, please. I'm also running out of time, so let's make this quick. We have a great example which uh, Mr. Manish Tiwari also mentioned and you also pointed out. This government could not hold a by-election in Anantnag for last now uh, more than 20 months and their uh, joint official candidate had to run away. That shows the level of uh, deterioration in the situation on ground. We will have to definitely win the confidence and uh, uh, support of people back which will take a little while before we can think of having a smooth election here. And all this has happened only during these last few years. 2014, if you, if you have statics of the last no. election of par parliament, you sh if you compare it with 2014 elections, you will definitely see a difference in that. So all the gains that we had uh, achieved till 2014 were lost. All, all this, our uh, guests PDP have spoken. BJP, uh, the Kashmir debate is by far the most contentious political issue in India. So I will not take sides. You've heard from the BJP, you've heard from an army man, you've heard from the opposition. You decide whether you believe that law and order will return now that the BJP-PDP alliance is over. To all our guests for lighting up the newsroom tonight with your arguments, thank you very much. I hope that there is some light in Kashmir. I hope that, and I do believe this firmly, as somebody who spent many years growing up and even as a reporter in Kashmir, I do believe very firmly that there is no military only solution to Kashmir. You have to win hearts and minds. Whether the governor can win hearts and minds is something we will report on very, very intensively. We're slipping into a break. I'll have more for you when we come back on the other side. Stay with us. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share, and subscribe to India Today. Also, check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.